What's up guys? My name's Rob with LittleBot Disc Dies. Today I'm going to be showing you guys a tutorial on how to do chameleon cells with Floetrol so you can get a disc that maybe looks kind of like this or uh, you know something similar where you get cells that are sort of ordered more than the randomness of other uh, Floetrol cell dyes you might have seen. So first things first, uh, I'll run through the uh, ingredients you're going to need here, all the stuff you're going to need to make this happen, get yourself something like this. If this does help, throw a like and a sub on the channel, it would help a lot. Uh, and it might make me do some more tutorials like this if this one's successful. So here we go. Uh, first thing you'll need, gloves, don't need your hands getting all uh, dyed up and this dye is not particularly good for you either. So you don't want it uh, getting on your skin. Uh, smock for the same reason. You'll need a measuring cup and a uh, little squeegee, uh, some measuring spoons. Uh, for chameleon cells you will need a, a pin kind of like this one. Uh, alternately you can use an afro pick kind of like this one if you want uh, some really uh, ordered cells. It, that's how I got this one, but uh, today we'll be using this because we're going to do um, something slightly different but still chameleon style cells. Uh, a little dish to hold your silicone. Uh, this is the stuff that makes the uh, cells pop out of the mixture. Um, three in one silicone is what works best in my experience, though you can get some uh, results with either dimethicone or silicone oil for acry acrylic pouring, but uh, I highly recommend the three-in-one silicone. Uh, you're going to need a disc. In this case, we're going to do this uh, Crave di uh, fairway driver from Axiom Discs, plasma plastic. Generally speaking, you're going to want to dye premium plastics. Um, stay away from the, uh, you know, the DXs, that sort of thing. Um, because those won't take dye as well, but this plastic should take, take dye very well and with this like uh, plasma style it should look pretty damn cool. Let's keep it going. Uh, so we've got our disc. You're going to need your dye. Uh, today we'll do a red, yellow, blue with a black uh, swipe over the top. Can't go wrong with primary colors. Uh, I use mostly pro chem dye with the exception of uh, when I do blacks I like to add a little bit of eye dye poly black. I find it's a little bit deeper color. Uh, you're going to need some stir sticks, some plastic cups for mixing. You're going to need a uh, tray. You can use a circle. Uh, I highly, highly recommend something rectangular that'll fit a disc in. Um, I believe this is 9 by 11 or 12 inches. Um, and this works pretty well because you can do a drag from one side to the other. Uh, and uh, find a good spot to put your disc in. You're going to need a heat lamp. Uh, this one I believe is uh, 150 watts. Um, you're going to need some plastic wrap and some hot water. Um, so yeah, with all that said, we will uh, get this party started and we'll start our mixing process. Okay, so for our mixing process, we're going to use the uh, recipe straight from uh, Pro Chemical and Dye for Floetrol beds. Um, for Floetrol beds, it says one half teaspoon of dye and one teaspoon of hot water. Mix that up and then add four ounces of Floetrol and the silicone oil. For, for chameleon cells, we're not going to add the silicone oil initially, but we are going to use this ratio of one half teaspoon of dye to four ounces of Floetrol. Today we're going to use six ounces of Floetrol. So uh, that works out to three quarters of a teaspoon of dye per cup we're going to add here. Um, I don't usually measure the, uh, the water I put in. I just get nice boiled hot water and uh, we'll start it up. I'm going to use uh, a half teaspoon of this quarter teaspoon of the Neon Cerise Pink. We're using Radical Red and Neon Cerise Pink for our red. We're going to add a little bit of water to the bottom. That's probably about enough. Um, just nice and hot. Uh, then we'll crack that sucker open 
add a quarter of a teaspoon little heap over the top so we've got our quarter teaspoon there and then so we don't cross contaminate things we're gonna throw that in uh, water put this back on the shelf we're done with that then we're gonna take our radical red half teaspoon of this heaping up we're gonna toss that in this also goes in there we're gonna stir that up there's still powder in there we'll just keep going like this stirring it up stirring it up I usually don't add the use the uh, wood until it's all dissolved nicely but in this case I might make an exception yeah we'll stir this up with the wooden stick to just get this process moving a little faster get it all dissolved in the water nicely so that it'll mix with the flow trawl really well because if you have powder in there left and then you put the flow trawl in it's going to be uh, a lot more difficult getting the mix uh, done nice nice and good that off to the side here Next, we're going to take our flow trawl and our measuring cup. As I said, six ounces is what we're going for. Oh, flow trawl gets chunkies in it. So we'll uh, shake it up. Probably going to finish off this container and use another one. So six ounces of flow trawl right there. Oh, put that over there. So Grab our little squeegee thing here, pour this in, we're going to use our squeegee to get as much of this as we can. All right, that's good. Not going to work too much harder than that. Then we're going to note on here how far up the cup we went so that we don't have to measure for the future cups when we're doing six ounces. So we're going to stir this up, stir this up, stir this up. Okay. That's the mixing process. It's pretty well, pretty thoroughly mixed. You can mix it more thoroughly than that, but uh, that should work just fine for now. Um, so I'm gonna mix the rest of this stuff up. Um, you can learn different ratios for how, what you wanna mix if you wanna mix colors. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, we'll be back in a minute and all this will be mixed for you guys. Okay, we're back. Uh, I've got all my colors mixed up, got my black which is gonna be my swipe color in this squeeze bottle because I'm not gonna use all this. It's gonna, we're gonna save that for later. Uh, once again, none of these have any silicone in them. So uh, that's the key to getting chameleon cells and getting it good. That's what we need, no oil in any of that. Uh, we're gonna lay down a very thin base layer of white. Very thin, like as thin as it will go spread it all out this just helps us to sort of keep uh, the paint from spreading out too much I find, or the uh, flow trail from spreading out too much when we put it into the tray we'll get it nice and covered pretty evenly uh, one thing I didn't mention this is optional you need a uh, like a brulee torch. Uh, you can use this for popping bubbles initially. Um, because we don't want those bubbles rising to the top, in this anyway, bubbles can help in uh, other cell dyes, but in this case, uh, we don't want those bubbles. So this is good for popping bubbles and for uh, activating cells later on. We might use it, but maybe not. 
Okay. So what we're going to do now is go, we're going to go red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue. Uh, haven't decided whether we want to do that two or three times. Uh, but that's what we're doing. I think we'll do it uh, three times. So it'll be kind of thin lines of red, yellow, blue. And we're just going to lay those down lengthwise. One at a time. Red. Yellow. And blue. Uh, like I said, you can't go wrong with primary colors. Get yourself a color wheel. It'll help you out a lot. We'll end up with less brown discs. Um, yeah. So we're gonna do stripes of red, yellow and blue. And you should work on a table that you either uh, have a cover on or uh, you don't care about getting paint on it. We might not have enough to get stripes of each, but we'll try to really thin ones at the bottom here, red. Red, yellow, blue, there we go. And now we're gonna just go back and do this again, and we'll keep filling in the gaps where we made, where we found them before. Just a little bit at a time. And a little bit of overlap is a good thing. And we're gonna do some stuff kinda like that later. So now, I'm going to take our Afro pick, and this is something you can do to sort of mix the colors a little initially. We're just going to make these lines across, just so the, uh, this way, when we do our black swipe, it's not going to be, there's going to be some mixing between them. And you know, some people and see this and be like, oh, I like that for my disc, and they just put a disc in this, and that's totally fine. But we're just looking to get a little bit of mix between these, uh, these rows, just a little bit. That is starting to look pretty cool, actually. Okay. So now, uh, I think I want a little more over here, actually. That's good. Okay, now, we're done with that. We've got our black. We're gonna lay this perpendicular to our Rose, we're gonna lay this right here. Just 
straight across the pan just like this And this is where some of the silicone comes, or the uh, saran wrap comes in. Get our hands clean. We've got it across the length of the tray. I think I want a little more in that corner there. Okay. We're gonna get a little bit of saran wrap, cut it across, and try and get something that is just slightly wider than the tray. Working with saran wrap is among the most annoying parts of this. But you can get okay enough at it that it uh, becomes less of a pain in the butt. So we're gonna stretch this across. Just drop it in the black. Make sure you get full contact all the way across the pan. We're gonna pull it across. Oh, I didn't get full contact across the pan. But anyway, we'll keep going. That's okay. Because we're gonna do this twice or maybe even a third time. Make sure we get our black on that other side. As I said, saran wrap is the most annoying part of this. Don't be afraid to get rid of it and just start anew with a new strip. Okay. Making sure to get full contact. You can move it back and forth a little. There we go. Now we're getting black sheet all the way across this. And that is pretty good. I think we'll do one more. The more times you do this, the thicker and darker your black is going to be. Um, I don't think I've done this more than three times because three seems to be as much as you need, really, in my experience anyway. Your mileage may vary. Take this side. Full contact, wiggle it, and drag. Okay, we've got our black over our colors. Now we're gonna take this thing. We're gonna be doing a spiral. I don't do these too often, but uh, we'll take our three in one, get a nice bit of it in there. Um, do I wanna do a spiral today? I think we'll just do a honeycomb. Screw it. We'll do the honeycomb. You can try a spiral if you want. But we'll just start here and go count how many. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten across. Let's see if we can get better light. You can see them forming already. Let them form a little bit. And then for the honeycomb, you want the next ones to be between those. So one, two, Three, four, seven, eight, nine. So we're gonna do ten, nine, ten, nine, ten, nine. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, 
tuned. And we're gonna, now there's a bubble there. See these are getting really nice colors. You got a green inside of blue there, some yellows. This is what you get when you mix them with that. Uh, two, three, with that Afro pick, you get a little bit of mixing initially. Now, as we move down the tray, the black is going to be thicker and thicker, so it might take them a little longer to pop up. Here we go, we're gonna keep going. Two, three, five, six, eight, nine. And that is gonna be where heat comes in because the heat will get them to really show themselves. Now I am wiping this off every 10 or nine, every row. Uh, and I, I don't know how many you could go with until without wiping, but uh, it's probably quite a few. Eight, nine, apologies for the lighting here. See if we can improve your view. I must have dripped a dot there, but looks like we'll be using this side anyway, which is totally fine. It's gonna be hard to see, but I can see with the naked eye for where the silicone dots are, even though they haven't quite revealed themselves on camera yet. You, I can just see like a little bit of a sheen. And this might be where I start adding a little bit of heat on top to make these start popping out a little better. Oh, I'm back in the row that I just did. Just seeing that now. Hopefully that doesn't screw us up too badly. Try to get these done as quick as I can. Three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. And uh, a lot of people ask, are you poking all the way to the bottom of the tray? Like, what do you do? In my experience, it doesn't really matter um, how deep you poke, but I do poke all the way to the bottom. And that's probably all we need. I don't need to do any deeper in here because I can already tell I'm gonna wanna use this section for the disc. Maybe I'll do, uh, once this row comes in, that should be fine. Well, whatever, we'll do one more. One more wouldn't hurt. Two, three, five, six, seven, that one's right in the middle of that. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, so now we have our rows, we're all good there. We're gonna leave this under this heat lamp and these cells will, look at what we got already here. Just gotta take a look at that. Wow, that's really nice already. 
So we're gonna let those develop. Uh, I'm gonna start a 10 minute timer, uh, maybe less. This shouldn't need that much, really. I know one half of my lamp is hotter than the other actually. So I'm gonna put the hot half over the less developed section. And that appears to be right about there. Um, yeah, so now we'll just chill and wait for these to pop. This already looks like an awesome cell bed. Really excited for this one. Clean this up in the meantime. Yeah, you've got some really nice mixed stuff here. Greens and blues, reds and yellows. It's not single colors. This is this is a, a really nice bed we've got here. So it's going to be a great demo for you guys. This is also where you can use this torch. I don't think we need it, but if I was to use this torch over the top, it would make them pop a little bit. You just have to be careful because you can, um, these are really nice uh, and very symmetrical. They're very circular. You can get, you can change the shapes of these cells if you use the too much of the torch on top. So, but this looks really good. We shouldn't need to wait much longer for this, actually. So we've got our disc ready. Maybe just cook a little bit of that side. I'm trying to think where I'm going to put my disc in here. I think we've got enough heat on top. We don't need to develop these any longer. And we'll just take a close look at this because this is absolutely sick. That is a great cell bed. That is mm, chef's kiss. All right, so we're gonna take our crave and lay it in here. Gonna do right about there, I think. Um, when you're doing this, lay one end in first and sort of slowly lay it down. Um, don't put it in straight down. That's how you get bubbles everywhere. Um, yeah. So let's get this done here. This is sick. All right. Right about there. That's great. Okay. Now before this goes under the heat lamp, we have more work with the... Uh, saran wrap to do. If you're going to want to reuse this cell bed, saran wrap is going to trap the moisture in. So what we're going to do is take strips of this stuff and put it right on the bed, not touching the disc, but just outside the disc. You just want to trap in as much of the moisture as you can for subsequent uh, dyes. And this is where having, so there's a lot of advantages to having a rectangular bed and this is one of them. You won't be able to really do this in a circular bed all that effectively. The other advantage to having a rectangular bed is you can drag your saran wrap cleanly across all the way. Uh, and in a circular bed, you cannot do that. So, there we go. I'm just pushing that down. I don't usually do, oh, you don't want to move this too much. Be very gentle when you move it. Okay, that's garbage throwing wrap.
The saran wrap is also going to keep you from getting like <clears throat> uh, a lot of the uh, scummy top because when you apply heat, any exposed flow trawl is going to get dried out and scummy. This is going to help with that. Okay, so we've got enough covered up. <clears throat> Oh, I must have had some blue on my hands when I put that in. That's okay. Uh, so we're going to put this under our heat lamp, turn that sucker on, center it up under the heat lamp, and uh, that stays there for initially I do an hour and 15 minutes. Um, and I come in every 20 minutes and I rotate this a little bit. Um, so yeah. In uh, an hour and 15, we'll be back and I will uh, pull this thing out and we can go check out the results. All right, an hour and 15 minutes later, turning off the heat lamp and we're gonna move this thing to a plate and then wash it in the sink. So, pull it out over to the plate. I got a little dye on my pants. It's kind of to be expected. See what we got. Let's see how it turns out. We're gonna start the cold water. The cold water is gonna deactivate this so it stops the, uh, the dyeing process. And then cold water on the back to uh, limit the amount of dye we get on the back here. And now let's flip her over. Yeah, this is really good. I think this is really good. The blue is very light, lighter than I expected it to be. But I guess that's what happens when you mix bright, bright blue and Caribbean. Wow. That might be one of the best dyes I've ever done. That looks pretty insane. And now... Uh, turn it on hot, get the rest off. Wow, that was pretty wild. Here we are with the result. This thing looks pretty awesome. Quite like how this turned out. Um, one thing I did was I did swipe again. I, I reused the bed and did it again. And this uh, tilt is what the result is from the second gen of that bed. So this is first gen, then we swiped the black over the bed again, and this is what came up from the second generation. So that turned out pretty cool as well. And then this is third generation with a uh, fluorescent yellow swipe over the top. This one turned out pretty awesome as well. So you can use these beds multiple times. These two were done, same technique. This one was done using the Afro Pick dipped in uh, oil. So you can see you get straighter lines they're more these cells are more like squares or rectangles actually um, and the bed's getting a little more orangey brownie so um, yeah first two definitely you can see the progression between all three of these um, so if you like this video you learned something hit that uh, like button subscribe if you uh, want to see more stuff like this I'm hoping to do more of these videos. Uh, if you want these discs, this one is going to be available at uh, limberdiscgolf.com. I'll leave the uh, link to my 
Limber Dyers Guild page in that. Once again, thanks to Limber for uh, making me part of the Limber Dyers Guild and helping me out there. This tilt is going to be up on my Etsy. I'm going to put a link to the my Etsy in uh, the description of this video as well. So if you want this tilt, you can go check that out there. And this will be at one of those two as well. I'm not sure where I want to put this up yet but it'll be either at limber or at my etsy page um so yeah just go check all that stuff out uh, and if you want to see more discs that i die you can sub to my instagram to check that out too there'll be a link to that in the description as well uh so thanks for watching the video thanks for checking all this out um until next time happy dying see you later